It's one of those superhero skills I've always wished I'd had. Well, I guess alongside x-ray vision, flying, of course, telepathy, the ability to read minds and communicate wordlessly through the power of thought. But is it really possible? Hell yes, please. I could use it to find out why I'm getting the silent treatment or to convince a rogue stormtrooper that those aren't the droids he's looking for. I mean, the real world applications are endless. Time for us to delve into the facts not fiction. There is a proud history of telepathy studies, from the thought-reading demonstrations of Washington Irving Bishop in the 19th century to the CIA and Soviet-funded psychic teams of the Cold War. And the experiments are continuing today to try and make it happen. And one of the most exciting comes from a team in Barcelona who work at Star Lab, who've recently been able to actually send a word, without saying it though, directly from a human brain in India to a human brain in France. Amazing. Mm. We're going to get onto how they did that in a second. But first, background. Since the 1990s, scientists have been using two main methods to try to hack into the brain and get a step closer to genuine telepathy. The first method is to tap straight into the nervous system by inserting wireless communicating chips into the bodies of a sender and receiver, picking up a brain message once it actually reaches a muscle, because a chip is just too big to be implanted straight into the brain. The problem, though, is that they're so big. Even when implanted in, say, the arm, they can't attach to a single specific neuron. So we end up picking up and reading a whole bunch of neurons together. So pain, touch, heat, which makes it really hard to send a clear message. Now, the second method bypasses implants altogether. And instead, you wear an EEG cap that channels brain signals directly to computers by reading the electrical activity. You can then transmit the brain pattern to something like a car or a false leg, and then associate the readings to actions like stopping or starting or swinging forwards or backwards. But at the moment, we can only read very simple patterns in the brain, so we can only program four or five movements in this way. So back to the Star Lab team, how did they do it? They linked these two parts together. They combined the brain signals made by arm movements in the sender and used these to electrically stimulate neurons in the receiver. And here is the how. So we can only read really big brain signals. So you need to do something that's really easy to detect. So the subjects were asked to send through the word bird, but first they translated it into a binary signal, so ons and offs, by clenching and unclenching their fists. This signal, kind of like Morse code, could then be transmitted from India via a computer to a human receiver in France who is rigged up with a transcranial magnetic stimulation device. Easy for you to say. Basically, something that could create flashes, so on and off, on and off, in their brain, which could then be translated back to binary and finally decoded back to the original word. Making someone in another country see something is pretty cool. It's actual brain-to-brain -brain communication. Well, it's not exactly telepathy as we imagined, no, is it? it? No, it's not. Mm. Firstly, it's not as direct or quick as we'd imagined, and that's because other brain areas, such as the motor and visual areas, are needed to code and decode the message at either end. The team used that method though because the motor and visual areas of the brain are virtually identical across everybody so we can easily detect and stimulate activity there. They couldn't use anything else because the rest of the brain simply hasn't been mapped yet and is very different across different people. So we don't know what different neurons do and so can't tap straight into them. Secondly, the process at the moment is slow because coding and decoding takes time. And thirdly, we have to use the internet and a computer intermediary to help send the message. And that kind of seems like cheating. Mm, yeah. Genuine telepathy should be brain to brain, communication with nothing in between. So how can we get ever closer to real telepathy? Well, to make things faster, and wireless, scientists are very keen to get chips into brains <laughs> and skip brain. all that coding and computer middlemen, especially if they can put them on control neurons, which will then mean even more can be passed between minds. But the real sticking point is that we'd also have to make a chip that can control more specific neurons rather than a whole area and insert it safely, which is easier said than done. So we may not be able to be very quick or subtle about it or transmit anything very detailed, but we can kind of do telepathy in a way. We just need a bit more time to sort out the mapping, <laughs> figure out the whole putting chips in the brains bit, and we're sorted. Humble Beard has become the world's most fashionable facial accessory. Whether you go for the Tony Stark, the Lumberjack, or the full Gandalf.